Tengo el placer de dar la bienvenida al primer ministro de la República de Malasia, excelentísimo señor Dator Ri Mod Nahib Bin Tun Aji Abdul Razak. Por favor, lo invito a dirigir la palabra a la Asamblea General. Bienvenido. Assalamu alaikum. Mr. President, allow me at the onset to congratulate you on your election as the President of the 65th session of the United Nations General Assembly. I am confident that under your very able and astute leadership, the 65th session will be able to complete its proceedings successfully. In this regard, let me assure you of Malaysia's full support for your presidency. Let me reaffirm Malaysia's unwavering and continuing support for the United Nations and the multilateral principles based on international law which it embodies. Let me also reiterate Malaysia's commitment to doing our part in this collective endeavour. We do so in a strong belief that all nations, no matter how large or small, rich or poor, strong or weak, have a common responsibility towards creating a better world for tomorrow. It is my firm belief that in order to create a better world for our future generations, we need to take into account today's realities as well as learn from the lessons of yesterday. Mr. President, among the most important challenges confronting the international community today that needs to be addressed collectively is the challenge of ensuring a just, equitable and durable peace. Peace not just during our time, but peace for all times. It is imperative that we have to achieve peace premised upon a covenant of the willing and not one enforced by way of hegemony through fear and coercion. Such peace can only be achieved if we are willing to constructively engage each other through dialogue. Such discussions would help in creating a deeper understanding as well as appreciation and respect of each other. In our conviction to create a better future for all citizens of the world. Mr. President, as a trade organization, WTO remains relevant to today's economic climate. And Malaysia believes that the Doha Round must return to its original objective of ensuring free, fair and equitable trade. Let us put our joint efforts and focus on moving the process forward and build upon the progress and achievement to date. It is urgent that we conclude this as soon as possible. Since the adoption of the MDGs a decade ago, which galvanized the world into collective action, there has been lack of efforts on joint endeavors towards the betterment of humanity. The missed opportunity at last year's climate change meeting in Copenhagen is a wake-up call for all of us. We need to bridge the gaps 
towards resolving and addressing the issues of climate change, which affects the lives and livelihoods of the peoples of the world and our future generations. Mr. President, on the 7th June 2010, the Malaysian Parliament unanimously passed a resolution condemning the brutal Israeli attack on the humanitarian convoy in international waters. This resolution was premised on humanitarian grounds and demanded that the Palestinians be given rights. This was why the members of the Malaysian parliament, regardless of their political alignment, stood together in full support of this resolution. In this regard, we reaffirm today our solidarity and sympathy with the people of Turkey and to the families for their tragic loss. Malaysia understood the necessity of letting the multilateral system work. We were happy to see the establishment of the UN Investigation Panel and the International Fact-Finding Mission of the Human Rights Council. We are pleased with the findings of the International Fact-Finding Mission of the UN Human Rights Council. The report has found that the conduct of the Israeli military and other personnel towards the flotilla passengers was not only disproportionate but also demonstrated levels of totally unnecessary and incredible violence. This inhuman attack constituted grave violations of human rights law and international humanitarian law. The Malaysian parliament feels vindicated by these findings. We are now waiting for the UN investigation panel to complete its work. We want to see the perpetrators responsible for the attacks be brought to justice and adequate compensation for the innocent victims of the attacks. We want the UN to act justly and decisively without fear or favour in a manner that would ensure that blatant transgressions of international laws are dealt with and that justice is done and seen to be done. Mr. President, on the Middle East peace process, Malaysia is encouraged with the recent development, especially the active role by the Obama administration and the Quartet in seeking a comprehensive and lasting solution. A, a solution not only to the problem between Palestine and Israel, but also to the wider region. We welcome the recent initiative by the United States in hosting the direct peace talks between Palestine and Israel. We also call on all parties to support these initiatives and not to be detracted from these efforts to achieve the aspiration of creating two sovereign states living side by side in peace with secure and recognized borders. For this to happen, the following prerequisites should be addressed. First, Israel must heed the high expectations of the international community to end this long-standing conflict. We call on the U.S. and other members of the Quartet to persuade Israel to end the construction of the new settlements in the West Bank and Jerusalem. Second, reconciliation efforts must bear fruits. The achievement of political unity among the Palestinians is vital in moving the peace process forward and the reconstruction of the Gaza Strip. Third, both parties must eschew violence 
and ensure the protection of civilians and respect for international humanitarian and human rights law. Mr. President, while harnessing our efforts to promote international peace and harmony, we are concerned with the increasing trend in some parts of the world to perpetuate or even fuel Islamophobia.